we go. This is not your usual Frequent Miler on the Air episode. This is a standalone segment we're calling Coffee Break. Each Coffee Break segment will cover a single topic related to miles and points. And each Coffee Break is limited to 20 minutes or your money back. Enjoy. Today's Coffee Break is about the Marriott Bonvoy offer for five 50K free nights. Let's get into it. So, Nick, there is a business Marriott card out with with an offer for five free nights. Uh, now, in this case, it's after eight thousand dollars spend, and at the same time, there's a consumer Marriott card that has also also is offering five free nights, um, but that one only requires five k spend. What do you think of these offers? Well, they sound really good. So, five free nights. We should probably also specify these are five free nights each worth up to 50,000 points. So you get five free night certificates that can each cover a single night that costs up to 50,000 points. And then you can also top off the certificates with up to 15,000 more points. So you could get a night that costs up to 65,000 points with each one of these certificates, but each one's only good for one night. So, I mean, both the consumer and business offers are really pretty good here because our value for 50K free night certificates is pretty high, right? I mean, you could do well with one of those. Yeah. I mean, it, it's not at all unusual to find a hotel costing $400, $500, $600, $700 a night with, you know, that's bookable with 50K certificate. Sometimes you have to throw in some extra points. These certificates, you're allowed to um, add up to 15,000 points for each one. So you can book up to a 65,000 point per night uh, property. But um the cert will cover just the first 50,000 points of that. Oh, between the two, you get the consumer card offer that only requires $5,000 spend and the business card offer that requires $8,000 spend. So at first glance, it seems like the consumer card offer must be better, right? Uh, yeah, it seems like it, but uh, I actually like the business card offer better. Um, so there, there's a few reasons. I mean, yes, it, it requires more spend, but uh, one one reason is that there are no 524 concerns around it at all. Like, so with the Chase consumer card, if you've opened five or more uh, consumer cards in the past 24 months, Chase is not going to let you uh, get this this card. Um, also. Uh, and with the Amex card, obviously, that's not an issue, but it also doesn't hurt your 524 standing. So if you sign up for this card, it doesn't count as another card against your total. Um, so it doesn't make it hard to sign up for more Chase cards in the future because it's a business card and doesn't go on your credit report. So it won't uh, it won't hurt you there. Um, there. There's a couple other reasons I like this card better. The, the This card uh, is easier to get through, to navigate through Marriott's Matrix of Doom. <laughs> That's a great name for it, the Matrix <laughs> of Doom. Because you do, you need to consult like this complicated matrix to figure out whether or not you're eligible for a new Marriott card. I mean, like who would yeah. ever know? I don't know. I mean, I, I wrote about this stuff for a living and I have to check the chart. Right, uh, me too. And I wrote, I you created wrote the, the chart. chart and I, I have it. to consult the chart. Um, yeah, basically the way Marriott works, Marriott has cards that are both issued by Chase and Amex and has a uh, very, very complicated set of rules about if you want this card, this Marriott card, you may or may not be able to get it depending on which other Marriott cards you've had before or that you currently have or that you looked at fondly. And, uh, you know, all of that, it's not that this business card isn't subject to some of that doom, but it, there's there are just fewer constraints. You're more likely to qualify for this one than than the Marriott one. So that's a nice thing. That's, I mean, that's definitely a nice thing. It's a lot easier to qualify for this one. In fact, we've got it in my household for that reason, because it was one that we could actually qualify for. So, <laughs> right. uh, and, and all the other reasons that you said, I mean, there certainly is more spend required, but uh, not counting against your 524 status is worth something to me. And, you know, so I think it's worth the extra spend. Uh, and then obviously the easier to easier to get aspect is nice. Yeah. 
Um, so also one other thing, the, the business card has a really nice feature, which is all the Marriott cards offer you automatic, um, like 15 and, or in one case, 25 elite nights per year. These are nights that, that get you closer to elite status each year. Also get you closer to lifetime status if you're after that. And what's unique about the business card one is that it stacks with the consumer ones. So if you have any Marriott consumer card, uh, then you either already have 15 nights a year or you might have 25 nights a year because of the Bonvoy Brilliant card. But if you get this card as well, then you have 15 more nights. So you have 30 or 40 nights automatic every year. And then you're really close to the 50 nights required each year for platinum status so that you'll get free breakfast at, at a handful of properties around the world. <laughs> <laughs> a large handful, a large handful in <laughs> yeah. fairness, but it, it, there's another matrix for that to figure out whether or not you'll get right. free breakfast. There's, but There's a matrix of show. breakfast doom you have to worry about there. <laughs> <laughs> you need a second cup of coffee for that. So we'll talk about that some other time. But, uh, but the consumer cards, if you have multiple consumer cards, the elite nights don't stack. You only get 15 or like you said, with the one consumer card, you get 25. But you only get that for no matter how many consumer cards you have. You're only going to get that bonus once. So the business card is the only option to stack more elite nights with a second Marriott card. So, right. so yeah, th that's the other part of the reason why we have the business card in my household. So, okay, all right. So we say maybe the business card is better if you can get the business card. And if you don't think you have a business, you probably do. We've talked about that before and we've got resources on the site about that. There's lots of ways to qualify for business cards, but either way, whether you're going to get the business or the consumer, is this a good offer? So the free night certificates, like you said, can be very valuable. I often find situations where I can get one cent per point or so out of Marriott yeah. points. So a 50 K certificate, at least theoretically should be worth like 500 bucks. So five of those, yeah. that sounds like $2,500. That sounds like a pretty hot offer, right? Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I'll give you a real example. I just looked this up before we, we, recorded the inn at bay harbor which is a really nice marriott that i enjoy going to in northern michigan um i found five free nights uh, available uh in june of this year which is kind of a miracle in itself so don't expect to find that when you go looking but um five nights were available to book with um either points or free night certificates each night cost fifty four thousand points so you would be able to use these certificates there as long as you have 4,000 times five, so 20,000 Marriott points to add on top, which you'd have by the time you, well, you'd have most Three of that points. by the time you, yeah. by the time you uh, meet the minimum spend requirement on, on the card. Um, so, so that seems pretty good. Stay at this really nice Marriott uh, for up to five nights with these five certs. Um and the cash price, the after taxes, two thousand six hundred and sixty-five dollars. So you're getting over twenty five hundred dollars in value, basically, if if you value the that hotel at face value, um, you know, with this uh, sign up bonus. That's great. Yeah. So I think you definitely can do quite well. I've booked a number. I've used my 35K free night certificates in general to really good value over the last few years. So 50K free night certificates, even better. Uh, so yeah, I think you could do very well with this. But there are some drawbacks, right? So first of all, free nights expire. And so they're only valid for a year from the date they're issued. So this isn't something you can have and hold forever and ever. And while Marriott used to be good about extending free night certificates one time, they don't really anymore. So that's not going to be an option. You're going to have that one year and that's it. Use them or lose them. And that sometimes creates all sorts of potentials for breakage, right? Because you might hold on to it, uh, you know, early in the year thinking, oh, maybe I'll find a better use later on. And, you know, then you get crunched at the end of the year. So there's definitely some limitations there. Yeah. And I think that's, that to me is the biggest thing that if you don't have a pretty either concrete plan for how you're going to use it or know that you travel so often that you're going to find good uses for these certificates within a year from when they're issued to you, then I don't think this, this offer makes sense. I wouldn't go after it, even though the upside is so high the chances are really good if you don't go in with a plan you're going to end up you know booking that that cheap like airport hotel uh just as some way to get some value before this thing expires and that would be a shame 
It would be. It would be. Although, you know, those cheap airport hotels these days, I just recently stayed. Not so cheap. JFK, not so cheap anymore. Yeah. I mean, I was I was glad to use a certificate on a recent stay by JFK because yeah, prices were just insane. So uh, but, you know, obviously that's going to vary from person to person. The point is a really good one. I've often said that, you know, when you use miles and points, you have to be ready to be flexible in different ways. And I think one of the ways to get good value out of something like this is you got to kind of be willing to plan a trip around using these certificates. And if that sounds like a bad idea to you, then it's probably not a good, uh, you know, a good offer for you if you're not ready to say, okay, well, now I have these five certificates, so I am going to do trip A. It doesn't matter what I had in mind. I'm going to do trip A here because I have a good chance to maximize the certs. And so, yeah, if that's cool with you, then I think this could be a great offer. I've definitely seen a lot of opportunities to do well with it, but it's not the only drawback, the expiration. The other drawback is that you can't get the fifth night free when you're using certificates. Marriott normally offers, well, we, we call it the fifth night free. I think they call it pay for and get one. You get the cheapest night out of five free. So if you use points entirely to cover a stay, like the stay that Greg just mentioned at the Inn at Bay Harbor. So if you were to cover that entirely with points, you would only pay for four of those nights. So you'd pay, right. what, 216,000 total points, uh, even though... The, the nights are 54,000 points per night because you get one free. So you can't do that with certificates. You can't mix four certificates and say, oh, well, but don't I get the fifth night free? You don't. You have to pay for right. it. If you right. And, um, and so so you might conclude from that, therefore, this, this offer is not worth the equivalent of 250,000 points. But if you weren't going to stay five nights in a row anyway, then it really could be used for uh, hotels that would have cost 50,000 points over five nights spread out, right? So yeah. it depends how you use it as to whether that fifth night free restriction is going to hurt you. Because if you're yeah. not staying five nights in a Marriott hotel anyway, then it doesn't anyway, matter. Exactly. And, and, and truthfully, very few of my Marriott stays end up being for five nights. So, uh, so that actually wouldn't be a downside to me. I, I'm a yeah. perfect use case where I'd be like, ah, that really doesn't matter because I'm probably not going to stay five nights at a single place anyway. So, so yeah, but it, it depends. If you are somebody who would stay the five nights, then yeah, it's a little bit less valuable than it seems at first anyway. What yeah. other downsides do we have? Yeah. Well, so historically, the 50K certificates have not been a sweet spot in Marriott's program. Like, so what you have are, and I'm saying historically because this this changes over time. They don't have an award chart, so uh, things change. In fact, the Inn at Bay Harbor um, used to routinely be 35,000 or 40,000 points per night. Now we're seeing it above 50,000, so it's become like a sweet spot because it's become more expensive. But um, But historically, what you often found were desirable hotels that that yeah that topped out around 35k or 40k points per night and then the higher level hotels topping out more like 70k or higher which would be out of range of these certificates because you're only allowed to add up to 15,000 points and so it, it was like this this you know unfortunate middle ground that that made these harder to use um for for top value and and keep in mind when you use a 50k cert for a 40k night, you're not getting back 10k points. Those extra 10k points are gone. Yeah. So then you got to value your certificate a little bit lower, right? Because, you know, if it's only replacing 40,000 points, then it's obviously not as valuable uh, for you. On the flip side, of course, you know, if it saves you a few hundred dollars for the night, then maybe it won't really make a big difference to you that you sacrificed a little bit of the point value because you got good cash value. So, you know, which way you're going to go on that, I think it's going to vary person to person, but I think it's a great point that there are just aren't that many great properties now uh, that are in that range. I, like you said, I frequently see places that are 40,000 points that are, would be a good deal with this. But then if you're looking for a 50K or above, they're often more than 65,000 points these days. So that's, yeah. you know, it's yeah. going to limit your options for totally maximizing the deal. Yeah. All right. Let's wrap this up then. What, what do you think overall? Is this a smoking hot deal? I mean, I think it is for anybody who can maximize the certs. And I think it's uh, smoking hot is hard to say. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it is a smoking hot deal. Whether or not it's a smoking hot deal that's good for you, that's, I think, the question you have to ask yourself. Because not every smoking hot deal is good for every person. So right. I think this would be a smoking hot deal if I could qualify for it. If I could qualify for it, 
I would probably hop on it because I have the flexibility to plan a trip around using my five free night certificates. So it might work for me, but I know a lot of people that that wouldn't work at all for. So you yeah. really have to ask yourself, does this fit my travel patterns? Right, right. I would even go a little further and say, yes, it's a smoking hot deal. As you, as Nick said, for anyone who is confident that they can use the certs to to decent value, even if you use them for 40K nights, you know, overall, yeah. that's a great deal. Um, but uh, I think there's I think there's just a lot of people out there that are at risk, uh, whether you know it or not, of getting to the end of the year and saying, oh, shoot, <laughs> I've got a month left. I haven't used these certificates yet. What am I going to do? And then you're going to be stuck, um, you know, booking something suboptimal, maybe or maybe not. I've my wife and I have had some great trips where we were forced to go somewhere because we had free nights that were about to expire. And uh, so maybe it'll force you uh, out of the house and to somewhere great. But <laughs> yeah, but you have that. to have the flexibility to be able to do that. And and so if you yeah. might have the flexibility to be able to do that, then great. And if you know you're not that type of flexible, then yeah, I think Greg's right. You have to question uh, this offer. All right. Very good. All right. So if you enjoyed this, don't forget to give it a like, uh, leave us some feedback, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, enable notifications. We appreciate all those things. They help other people find the channel out as well. We hope you enjoyed the first coffee break today. And if you'd like to get more of this stuff in your email inbox each day or each week, you want to go to frequentmiler.com slash subscribe so you can join our email list and follow us on all the various social medias. We will see you guys again in a few days. Bye, everybody.